Hello friends, today I'm showing you how to make these mermaid tails. My pattern is available on Etsy or for free for my $5 and above tier patrons. There's a few different options for fins, both side, back and bottom, and then there's this one that has a specific set of fins to make it look like a Siamese fighting fish. There are three different files, there's one for the tail and the fins on the green tail and then there's a whole page just of fins and then one specifically for the Siamese fighting fish. So make sure to download which type you want, either US letter or A4 and then make sure that you're printing at 100% scale. Then we need to check the scale at the bottom to make sure that it's printed correctly. If that's okay, then cut out your front and back tail pieces. I'm going to show you kind of a basic one first. You need to use stretch material for the tail part. This one is a two-way stretch, so I'm making sure the stretchier way goes um, around the doll. When you're cutting your back piece, make sure to flip to get a mirrored image. This time I'm drawing on the fabric and then cutting it out. I find this easier because there's some notches that need to be transferred. So on the pattern there are start and stop lines for sewing. I'm just marking those on now. To be fair, they, they don't need to be perfect and you could roughly guess them. The one here is just to make sure that you can get your doll's booty in into the tail. <laughs> okay, so right sides together. We're gonna sew that straight seam from right at the bottom, not where I pointed, right at the bottom to that notch line. We're using an eight millimeter seam allowance here. I'm just using a straight stitch and um, back stitching at the beginning and end of each row of stitches. So then lay that flat and then take your front piece and then front right sides together again, pin those together. They're not the same shape so you're going to need to ease them around the curves. So what that means is just to match them up and kind of bend the fabric a little bit. The back piece is a lot curvier than the front piece but we want to make sure that we get that contour to make sure that this hugs the doll's legs. Then we're going to sew the length of the side seam but leaving a little bit at the bottom unsewn. This is to help us insert the fin later. Now I'm using a 5mm seam allowance and I'm still using a straight stitch. So there's that little opening at the bottom. Now I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side, again making sure to ease the front to match the back. And then again leaving that little gap at the bottom. I'm using a walking foot to do this because I find that it feeds the fabric under better when I'm working with the stretch material. Now we need to turn it inside out. I'm just going to check that it fits the doll. Different fabrics have different stretches, so you might find that you need more or less seam allowance, but hopefully this pattern will work with most fabrics. So now I'm going to start working on the fin. I decided to cut the piece out whole, so I'm um, folding it on the paper to then cut it out. I wanted to use this voile for this fin piece so there are three different ways that I would recommend making the fin so this one is a bag out method so I'm cutting two pieces of this voile and then I'm going to sew them together wrong sides together and then turn them right out. I'm sewing along this dotted line all the way around 
both fins but making sure to leave about a centimeter on either side to allow me to turn them it's really important to clip this bit here because when I turn it if I don't have that clipped it will be tight and it will make the fins sit strangely so now I need to turn each fin right way out separately I'm just using scissors to help me poke out the very tip there it's fiddly but you can get there I'm, I'm sure so a little bit extra on this fin I wanted this to look like Ariel's tail so I'm adding some top stitching so first I'm going right round the edge of the fin Then I'm sewing a line straight down the middle of the fin and then a curved line down each of the sides of that straight line. Threads everywhere they just need trimming so Ariel has like a waist fin um, and I want that to stand up quite solidly so I'm just coating this piece of oil in glue letting that completely dry which will make it really really stiff I'm not bagging out the waist um, but there's that seam allowance if you want it to because I don't need the seam allowance I'm gonna cut straight along that sew line and then I'm using a water melt away pen to draw those on and then just cutting those out with the bagged out method you could easily add a wire for more structure so on the outside of the fin I'm sewing the waist frill thing and I'm just doing that with a running stitch and I'm bending that waist frill around the waistline. Then I need to turn kind of the messy edge inside and then we're gonna sew that down with an invisible stitch. So this is gonna help make the fin look more finished around the waist but then also make that frill stand up don't worry I'm going to show you a much more simple way to finish the waist if you don't want this frill I just really wanted this to look like Ariel's tail when you're doing an invisible stitch I do have a separate video for this but basically you're doing a running stitch but the side that is facing the nice the nice way so right now the side that's facing me has a tiny tiny stitch and the back has a bit of a longer stitch so it's very hard to see obviously easier to see on doll scale but almost invisible so I'm gonna do the same on the other side there I didn't show adding the fin piece very well here but I do show it later so don't worry I did a little bit different here so you want to take the um, fin the right way out fold in the sides and then stitch it down on each side and then sew the fin in I just use tiny whip stitches to sew the fin in it's not super visible you could do a ladder stitch if you wanted to but I think that would drive me mental basically and um, then I put a snap on the back I didn't like the way that the fin was hanging so I decided to just put a couple of stitches in between the two fins to make them hold a little bit closer together it's probably because of the top stitching but it you can adjust the fins as you're sewing them into the doll's tail as well and then that's this one finished Thank you. 
Now I'm going to show you how I made the pink fin. I'm going to use side and back fins for this one and this is probably the most simple way to do fins. This grey line is in case you wanted to bag out but that's not what I'm going to show you. What we're going to do is make the fins on a single layer of fabric stiffened with glue. So once I've cut those three pieces out I'm going to draw around the tail fin on one side and then I'm going to flip that over so that I've got one tail piece. You can cut this on the fold if you want to, but because I want to stiffen the whole thing with glue first, I wanted to draw around it on the fabric. So we just need one back fin for this particular fin. To be fair, you could add lots and lots of back fins if you wanted to. And then we need two side fins, so one with the letters up and then one face the other way, so we've got mirrored fins. To be fair, it doesn't really matter thinking about it. So I wanted to airbrush these fins. I'm using alcohol ink. I'm diluting that with some ethanol. And then adding a couple of drops of ink. This is just ink for resin. I'm gonna do a fade from yellow to pink and then add some details with like a darker purple as well. I made sure to do the airbrushing on both sides because it doesn't soak through. So because this is alcohol ink, it should be permanent. I'm making quite a bright pink here. This was my first time airbrushing on fabric, but I think I'm going to do it more because I think it looked pretty cool. So I'm just adding purple to that pink that I just made to add detail. and then darker blue to add even more detail. Once it was dry, the color wasn't nearly as vivid. I'm by no means a pro with the airbrush. I've like barely learned to do these controlled strokes and they're kind of a mess, but I have fun. I'm then pouring quite a liquidy PVA glue over the top and just spreading it with my finger and then letting that dry on top of a piece of plastic. So once that's dry, I've cut out my um, pattern pieces for the tail and then also cut out all my fins. That's the back fin. I'm gonna sandwich it between the two pieces. I'm doing this quite high and um, just below like the opening, but you can put it wherever you want. And then we're gonna pin and then sew it the same way we sewed the green one. So all the way from the very bottom, but leaving a little gap at the top so that the doll can get in. I watched a bit of Jackie O while I was doing this. Again, this is a eight millimeter seam allowance. And then these are the side fins. I only showed putting one side in, I'm afraid I lost the, the footage of the other one. I rolled up that back fin to make sure that it doesn't catch when I'm sewing the side fin. And then again, easing the front piece around the back piece. So this is actually the second side I'm sewing. I have a new camera and I forgot that if you don't watch the battery, it can run out quite quickly and it won't record that piece. So this is what I was talking about. I'm sewing the bottom of the tail. Just fold those over and then um, whip stitch those down and do that on both sides. Just trimming that back a little bit because it would be a bit bulky. It actually doesn't matter if this is bulky because it will then kind of hide the tra transition between the doll's feet and the like the tail fin because obviously the doll's feet are still in here so they can be a little bit visible so this piece is too big you could trim it i'm gonna fold it the glue gives so much structure to this fabric i definitely think this is the easiest way to do fins with this pattern 
and then I'm just doing some whip stitches. I was convinced it was gonna be a nightmare to sew, but actually it wasn't that bad. I always get threads caught around my scissors. I forgot I'd left that in, but yeah, I, that's a pretty true representation of what sewing is like for me. And there's always at least one cat on the desk. At one point I had all three. So I'm kind of just whip stitching one side and then flipping it and whip stitching the other. If you're very clever, you could probably get both at the same time. And then any of the extra like hole at the side that's still there, I'm just whip stitching that close as well. Again, you could use a ladder stitch if you wanted. I do have a tutorial on that, but I just don't have the time for, or the patience for, um, for ladder stitches if I can avoid it. I love a whip stitch. What can I say? So this is um, a much easier, m m more simple way of finishing the hemline. I'm just turning it down, putting in a couple of back stitches and then doing a very small running stitch um, around the top. You could do a back stitch if you wanted it to look neater. You could glue it if you wanted to. There is a little bit of extra room at the top. so. Um, I'm taking it out when I'm adding the fastener um, but yeah if you glued it, it it will go solid and not stretch anymore but it's not a problem there's definitely enough room to do that if you're very clever you could get it under your machine I am not that clever and then again sewing a snap if you wanted to you could add velcro I th depends on the piece but I tend to use snaps this fin I actually ended up doing a little higher waisted so depending on how far you squish the doll through you can get a different waistline so this pattern is for the Siamese fighting fish and it's a little bit different so there's one strange looking pattern piece and you, you kind of need to measure it yourself. I couldn't fit it on the paper even if it was a folded in half one. So you want to make a piece that looks like this with these curved edges. You can make it as long as you want. The longer it is, the frillier your tail will be. I had an absolute brainwave. Um, that, so if you use heat on synthetic fabric, it seals it, right? Well, I can use the soldering iron to then cut it. So if you try this, be careful. It's easier doing straight lines. You can just do it a longer metal ruler. Freehand curves aren't as neat. Um, actually, for this project, it's perfect because it doesn't need to be neat. So I'm, I'm measuring it with a ru ruler and roughly eyeballing this, which, which totally works with this. But yeah, be careful. It's hot. <laughs> it works with um, satin and like I tried it on some lame fabric as well. And yeah, it worked perfectly perfectly. So I decided to add a super thin wire to the edge of the bottom fin. So not the flat edge, but the rest of it, the sides, the curves, the long bottom. Yeah, just with a running stitch. So I'm folding the fabric over and then, yeah, running stitch the whole length of that. To be fair, I think it's really worth it for this piece. It does look so good. If you left it off, the um, hang of the fabric would be a little bit different. Still beautiful, but different. Um, now I'm gathering the back and side fins. I have two back fins. You could do more. You could do just one. You could leave it off completely if you wanted to. And I did it completely. This pattern honestly is so adaptable. So once you've cut out your tail pieces, we're going to sandwich that back fin in in the same way that we did the pink one. I'm pulling that gather a little bit looser. You do you if you want a tight gather, do it. If you want no gather, would still be awesome. The second back fin I'm actually gathering a lot tighter and then pinning lavishly to then sew in the same way that we did with the other two fins. Tails, tails. I do this every time. A 
it's so pretty i am i'm so so proud of this pattern like this has been my holy grail of mermaid tails forever and i, I can't believe i managed it honestly so for the side fins i'm i'm pulling those very very tightly I think if I did this again, I would put wire in all of the fins just to see what happened. I think it'd be really interesting. So one thing to be aware of with this one, because the um, fins are so voluminous, um, make sure that you don't catch them in any of the other seams. Uh, this seam is easier, the next seam is a little trickier. Because of the volume of the fins as well, the um, front piece for me didn't um, reach the top of the back piece, but it's not a, a problem. It just means take a little bit less when you do the, the waist seam. So sewing that again, leaving the gap at the bottom. Five millimeter seam allowance for this one. The back's always eight, the side's four, um, five. And then when you add the other side seam, I pinned all of the other fins in to make sure that they didn't get caught in that seam. I've done this before. Um, I'm very good at catching bits in, in other seams and um, for this piece I, I think it would mean remaking it. Which we want to avoid. <laughs> And then sewing up that seam again. Making sure to leave that little bit at the bottom. So because there's pins in this, um, I found it a little bit more difficult to turn out. So you might want to put some like basting stitches in to hold it down. So for the bottom fin, I pulled the gathering thread as tight as I could and then sewed all those gathers together. So it's kind of like a semi-circle, I guess. Just literally as tight as they go. I also trimmed down those wires a little bit. So now we're folding the tail bits in again. Same way I did with the, the other fins. So the back fin actually um, did, did come down as far as the bottom, I just whip stitch that down as well. And again, more whip stitches to add the, the fin. I'm so, I genuinely, I'm so proud of this pattern. Like really, really happy with it. And I, I like, I really hope you, you like it as much as I do. And I, I really hope it's helpful. I did the waist seam the same way I did the pink one, but it would look so good with a frill on the top as well. That would look super cute. Such a frilly doll. And then added a snap fastener at the back. And then it's done. Seriously, if you make these, please show me, DM me, tag me, whatever you fancy. I really want to see them. I'm honestly, I'm so excited about this pattern. I made it because I couldn't face sculpting a tail. I didn't know which way to sculpt it. Didn't want to. And then I know there are some people that aren't confident with sculpting as well. And I thought, if I patterned this, this could be an awesome way to get even more people involved in mermaid and everyone needs a mermaid doll right so thank you so much for watching check the description box for links for the pattern and um, subscribe if you'd like to i'd love that that would mean a lot to me like if you like the video check me on insta yeah 
happy to have you here thank you for watching until the end and i shall see you soon thanks very much bye